What's up, YouTube? Um, so every now and then I see somebody get on the forums or threads um, asking, hey, I got bump steer or I got torque steer issues. How do I get rid of those issues? So I figured I would make a video showing you guys how to get rid of torque steer and how to minimize your bump steer because you still want a little bit of bump steer, especially if you're um, racing. So, all right, let's get to it. Let's get into the topic of torque steer. So if you're, your vehicle, when you get on the gas, you get like a jerk in the steering, um, that's, that's gonna be most likely torque steer. Um, there's gonna be something I'm gonna tell you about a lot of common mistakes that people think, make them think they have bump steer, but we'll get into that second. Let's talk about torque steer. So, <clears throat> um, excuse my artwork. All right, so I got a wheel. And this wheel has a center line that goes through it. Here's the hub. This is an invisible wheel, by the way. So you can see my hub inside here. All right, so you got the center line of the wheel and you have the hub. So let's kind of draw the rest of the car. So when you're braking or you're accelerating, there's a force that goes this way for um, braking and a force this way for accelerating. So when you accelerate, there's a rotational force, which is this, because these are steering wheels. There are wheels that could be steered. So one thing you need to learn about is scrub radius. If you wanna get rid of torque steer, um, you need to start researching and looking into how to maybe change your scrub radius. So a couple ways you can change your scrub radius. Um, with the McPherson, since I'm gonna kind of push this video towards the DC5 and EP3 chassis, because that's what I'm predominantly working with. Um, you have the McPherson strut, and the uh, top housing right here with a little nut. And then you have the lower control arm. So you have the ball joint right here and you have this little top nut, nut up here. So if your wheel's right here, this is going to, for a McPherson strut, here's the little spring I'll make for you guys. It's gonna be, it's gonna start from up here at the nut and it's going to intersect that ball joint and that's your steering access line, AKA kingpin access inclination. So to get a kind of better view, if this was like an A-arm double wishbone suspension, you would have two control arms, one right here on the top upper control arm and usually a little lower control arm might stick out a little bit further. And typically they'll be closer to where the wheel is. So you would know this ball joint is the top part they'll measure from and this low is the other part. You'll see, bam. See how much easier that is if you are going to measure your scrub radius versus having to measure using a, um, um, a McPherson because this is you know something that's harder to see versus it's right in front of you that way you can know that hey my center line's right here this little distance right here between the steering line access and this is your scrub radius now typically on our cars um the scrub radius is going to be negative so when you're adjusting pushing this backwards and forwards for your camber you need to be aware that you're changing your kingpin inclination or SAI steering access inclination. You're changing that right now. So if you're moving it back, basically it's gonna make it more negative. Now, when you go back to this drawing right here, um, yeah, so 
Basically, that means that your steering axis, this little dot, will represent. If you have a scrub radius right here, that rotational force is happening at this point. So that helps with torque steer because it has to go past the center line of your tire to steer. So that helps keep your wheels um, more stable against torque steer. But keep in mind, the further your um, scrub radius is, the tougher your steering is going to be. So you want to have very little of it, you know? So you want to try to get your scrub radius close to the center line, but you don't want it on the center line. You want a little bit of scrub radius. So that means, so let's see if it was positive. So if your scrub radius went positive, then that means this force is steering before the center line. So that'll make it more prone to want to turn under any kind of acceleration or rotational force on that steering axis. So, so let's talk about some of the mods you can do to adjust this and some of the things that you do and you probably unknowingly change your um, scrub radius. So going back to this. Um, you're just gonna, actually, I'm gonna make a big giant wheel. So a big giant wheel. So one of the things is the little um, wheel hub. You know, you got that wheel hub right in there where your hub uh, connects. Little, uh, basically, wheel offset. So wheel offset. That changes the scrub radius. Not just the wheel, but or the, the centerpiece of your wheel, but also where your hub connects. So basically, you could use wheel spacers. So spacers. Spacers would adjust it. And then ultimately, like I just said a little while ago, the camber adjustments that you make from the camber plate change the top nut, the little top nut. So if you move that backwards, it's gonna move this arm backwards and it's gonna move this nut backwards and you're gonna have a different steering access inclination that's gonna move off your line. So moving it I think moving it negative would actually, um, negative camber actually helps bring it closer. But let's say you act, you, um, you know, I don't know, like your friends told you being JDM was cool. So let's say you went out and got some Type R control arms. Well, Type R control arms, they come out about five millimeters more. So your control arms a little bit longer. Type. R, and then you have the smaller one, Type S. So if you went got Type R Integra for DC5, the control arm's a little bit longer. So what does that do? That's gonna make it more negative versus if you're hitting this line right here. So just be aware Changing those control arms also affects the steering line or steering, yeah, I'll just call it steering line or steering inclination. So let's say you do put the Type R control arms, they're lighter, they're aluminum, um, and you want the negative camber or whatever. Well, keep in mind the Type R hub is about probably 10 millimeters longer. So what does the hub do? It pushes your center line out. So that will still bring you back closer to the center line of the wheel. So just be aware that, you know, those kind of changes affect how your car is gonna resist against torque steer and its scrub radius and its kingpin inclination. So, let's talk about bump steer. So bump steer. 
as your wheel moves up and down from its ride height, has a rotation to it. It either rotates toe in or rotates toe out. So for racing purposes, you would maybe want just a little bit of bump steer for cornering. Um, this will give you what is called the Ackerman steering. Ackerman steering, which basically talks about, you know, your center point steering um, and the angles that the two steering wheels have to take in order to steer the car without slipping because one has to take a longer path than the other. So having toe out assists of turning in. So Ackerman steering. So what kind of influences um, bump steer? So let's, I'm gonna use the kind of double wishbone kind of setup just to make it easier. So here's the upper control arm, UCA. And let's say here's a um, lower control arm. All right, so actually do this a little bit more realistic. Let's give it a little bit of an ankle for upper control arm. So if I were to, uh, I'm gonna draw three imaginary lines. Here, here, actually four, sorry. <laughs> and we have this line that sticks from here and this line here. So this is the ground. So my instant center is this. That's gonna be your instant center where these two control arms, if you drew imaginary line from them, the part where they intersect is instant center. Instant center. All right. So for your tie rod, you want it to intersect this center in order to have bump steer. So on our systems, we kind of have a tie rod that's a little high. Most systems, you're gonna see it low with the control arm because as long as it's even with the control arm on the low, it's gonna intersect this, um, this instant center at some point. But ideally, you'd want your tie rod to intersect, intersect between, or in, stay in between these two imaginary lines. But in our DC5 and EP3, they don't. So that kind of in, influences a toe, um, a toe out kind of scenario. But, so we're gonna want maybe to have our, um, our tie rod, you know, just have a little bit of a angle because it's a little bit higher. So, we give it a slight angle and, you know, it's close. So, the closer we are to um, this instant center, the minimal bump steer we're going to have um, with the tie rod. Um, basically, uh, just controlling that angle of the tie rod, which is why some people invert them um, on our chassis. So a lot of people will, so you have the little um, coilover system, typically has an arm that goes like this, and when they lower the car, the tie rod kind of gets angled up like that. Well, now um, your tie rod's most likely pointing below what your instant center is if your control arm right here is, you know, not matching up with this control arm. So um, basically, people will, in order to make it you know, not have such a bad angle. Oh, crap. They might invert it. So now it has less of an angle. So now it's gonna maybe intersect 
above ground and it's gonna have a minimal bump steer. And uh, unlike if you were to have an angle that just went straight down and didn't get close to your um, instant center. But you know, with it being high like that, you kind of do want to have a little bit of an angle. Obviously because you know, it looks because of how high it is. Um, unlike the tie rods that sit right here, you know, it's going to always be pretty much intersected by the top control arms imaginary line. This one needs to come down and it intersect with this top control, which will be the nut on the top chassis. Once again, you know, you want to have it kind of getting kind of close like that to where you have it very close to your instant center. So basically controlling the angle and making that hit your instant center will keep your bump steer minimal. So I'm trying to keep this video as short as I can, short and sweet, um, cause I know I did a lot of explanation. Um, to measure bump steer, you, there's actually something you can buy called a bump steer gauge, which, you know, mounts to your um, wheel hub. And then you just jack up the suspension, just jack it up and it will show you how much it goes in towards the engine or how much it tows out. Um, just that, that way you can get a good uh, actual real idea of how much um, angle you're getting on your bump steer. Um, so hopefully um, this helps you minimize torque steer outside of just being told on the forums, get an LSD, make sure that your suspension bushings are good you know, the usual, everything that most people already know. LSD. Um, I have a video on LSDs too to kind of help you navigate on which LSD is best for you, whether you're drag racing or whether you're um, uh, road racing or autocross or whatever. So be sure to check that video out. Um, that's all for today. Um, I have huge upgrades coming for my RSX that you guys will soon see. And the channel is going to take a pretty big, huge turn towards um, what you haven't been seeing lately. So, um, see you guys in the next video.